Welcome to this short video on what is packet capture. My name is Darren Delaney from Netfort. It's just a quick intro to network packets. So, network packets flow between clients and servers or clients and applications. So, if you connect to a website, for example, there is bidirectional packets. So, what we mean is your client sends data to the site. Let's say what page you want to access, and the website responds with images, text whatever video from, from whatever that page is. So packets flow back and forward to clients and servers. So what is network packet capture? Or packet capture or PCAP, there's different terms, but packet capture. What it means is that as network packets flow between a client and an application, or it could be many clients and an application, a copy of them is received by something that something could be could be a network tab, could be a spam port, could be um, your laptop running Wireshark, for example. And we'll talk about these options in a, in a minute. So ba it's basically a copy of the data that's flowing between, let's say, a client's and an application. So how can we capture packets? Well, as I mentioned, you could use an application like Wireshark. So Wireshark uses um, a library called WinPCAP, so it's able to capture packets that's going in and out, let's say your laptop. You can use a network tap, that's a test access point. That is a um, very reliable way of capturing traffic, let's say to and from one or more servers. If you Google network tap, you'll find more. You can configure a span or mirror port. So if you've got a managed switch, you could tell that switch to send a copy of network packets to a particular port and you can plug your laptop into that and do some analysis. Or a lot of firewalls nowadays and even some routers, they have built-in packet capture features. Um, so you could tell the firewall to analyze certain packets or you could tell you know, some routers to take a look at some packets. Just one thing I'd say on that is just be wary about setting up the device to do too much packet capture as it will impact on the performance of that firewall or router. So let's take a look at the two most common ways people use cap uh, packet capture. So my first example I'm going to use Wireshark. Now Wireshark is a free tool. It's very popular. You can just Google Wireshark. You can download it. It's free to use. Uh, running version 2.0, so it's got this new uh, welcome screen. Um, it is handy because you can see which interfaces are uh, active, which, which have got traffic on them by looking at the graph here. So to start capturing packets, just double click here and um, you're up and running. Now it's very, very useful for troubleshooting problems. So if I go to a browser, for example, and I go to a website, let's go independent. .ie, for example, I go back to Wireshark and I just stop that. Okay, <laughs> it's a problem with Wireshark, there's millions and millions of packets, but um, somewhere in the middle of all of this stuff here, here's, here's an example. So this is packet capture, here's all my packets, I've captured them, and what I'm doing now is packet analysis. So. I can see um, some things in here, like uh, if I look at the IP part of the product, the packet here, or the header, um, see the source IP address, destination, so the source is the website, destination is my IP address here, I can tell it's because it starts with 10. It's the private address range where this is public, so independent.ie must be resolving to this IP address this morning. And uh, let's make this a bit bigger. I can see um, TCP stuff here. In fact, the source port 80 is no surprise because it's uh, web traffic. And um, I can actually take a look inside. And this is where packet capture really differs from something like NetFlow. I can look inside the packet. So what can we see? Well, we can see here that this particular packet, part of its role is to transfer an image file. So this server, the web server, which is independent.ie.ie, is sending an image file um, to my browser. Is there anything else we can learn? It's actually coming from CloudFront, so it's a CDN. 
which again is interesting because um, with flow tools they, they get very confused with this sort of stuff. Um, some more information here about the, the actual image itself. I probably need to look at other packets to get the actual uh, name of the image. This just looks to be some metadata associated with the actual image itself. It looks like it's running Apache. So lots and lots of detail in here. Um, and it's useful if I was troubleshooting an application issue with this website, I've got real low level detail here to help me troubleshoot those problems. However, my one transaction, let's go to number of packets, that transaction with uh, that website, if I scroll down here, has resulted in, I only went to the homepage. Uh, I'm looking at possibly around 5,000 packets of data. Now there are filters you can apply here. I can go applies filter and things like that, but uh, you really need to know your packets, uh, your Wireshark and your um, regular expressions to do that. But I'm not knocking it. It's a fantastic tool. It is great for troubleshooting a client problem. Um, it has its uses in any network um, manager or network administrator's toolbox. Definitely part Wireshark should be in there. But I'm not going to take a look at a, a commercial packet capture application <clears throat> which can deal with these greater volumes of uh, packets. So in the next example I'm setting up a commercial network packet analysis tool. I'm using one from that we develop ourselves called the Network Land Guardian. Now the way it works is your as your clients, so I've got um, wireless clients up here. I got wired clients, so the data from these machine, these systems, um, travels through the network down through edge switches, goes through a core switch. Um, some data might be internet bound, so somebody browsing a website, and data will also come back in. Um, it could also be traffic coming from somebody here who's accessing their uh, file shares. So data is moving around, but a lot of it goes through the core switch. In this case, we've set up a monitoring port, sometimes called a spam port. So we configured the switch to send a copy of this data. So the copy of these packets here, a copy of these packets here. So anything that's going in and out there, anything that's going in and out servers, a copy of that data sent to the um, monitoring or spam port where the Land Guardian picks it up and does uh, analysis of these packets. And we're talking analysis here of billions and billions of packets because on you know, most networks, with, even with just a few clients, you're going to have a lot of traffic moving around. So let's take a look at what it actually looks like. So I've just logged on to my Land Guardian and I'm on what, the dashboards. So we spoke there about um, internet usage earlier on. We looked at um, some connections to um, I think it may have been netfor.com and here we could see similar things. So we have netfor.com, fact of two gigabytes data and we can drill down. We could see the client IP addresses, we drill down. So we don't need to be a, a packet geek or a Wireshark, Wireshark expert. We just could click on the links here and find out more information. So we could see the fact that somebody's downloaded an OVA file. It's two gigabytes in size. It's actually quite difficult in Wireshark to calculate the total volumes of data because it's looking at individual packets where with something like LangGuardian it actually totals it all up so you know how much bandwidth has been used by IP addresses and if I click this button here I can also resolve it to usernames so we can actually see the users that are that are downloading this particular file off network.com so you've got the user, the resource, and the total traffic. And pretty much all of this information here is, is being extracted from the network packets. So this is called uh, metadata. I'll give you another good example of how you can use metadata. So Laura here in finance is a top user based on the amount of data that they're moving around the network. If I drill down on that amount of data, I could see that's file share. And if I drill down in the file share, so we two clicks, we could then see the fact that, oh, they're moving an archive file around the PST file. So 
it may be good um, to inform that user may store that cop that archive file locally. We don't want to move around the network. Um, there are also copies of MP4 files um, and some other things. So two clicks there, I can go from a username down to the files that are moving around. And again, this is packet capture in use. This is may seem at first very technical, but if you use it the right way and collect the right sort of data. Um, and extract the right sort of information from the packets. It's very useful for troubleshooting um, both operational and security problems on your network. I mean, there are thousands of use cases, um, as I said, from a security point of view, for, let's say for tracking ransomware or malware, or DDoS type attacks, to operational type issues. For example, okay, a lot of bandwidth use here at a particular time. Why is that? So we can drill down, we can see it's TCP traffic. Now remember in Wireshark, we, we could see TCP mentioned. If we go back here quickly. Um, let's go in here to the um, TCP piece. That's UDP traffic actually, that's uh, DNS query. Let's pick HTTP one. So TCP mentioned here, but it's, you know, it's buried in here. Um, on the Land Guardian, I also see TCP. But if I drill down here now, instead of drilling down into too much detail, I can see the protocol, so what ports, drill down further, you can see IP addresses. So it's it's the same information that you can see in Wireshark, but it's not as technical, it's a lot easier to use. So there are commercial tools out there like LangGuardian that does packet capture, but makes the analysis much easier and you don't end up storing loads and loads of packets on a disk. You can just store the interesting metadata. The probably two most common ways uh, packet capture is used, Wireshark or a commercial tool like LangGuardian. So I hope you found that useful. We have a lot more uh, resources on our website, nefer.com. Um, in fact, there's also a free spam port configurator there if you want to set up a spam port on your own network. So you can download that tool, it's, it's free. Um, there's a link on the, just there on the, web, on the video at the moment. If you click on that, you can download um, a free copy of that tool.